The term severe aortic stenosis signifies when the main valve which connects the biggest chamber of the heart to the rest of the body starts degenerating, calcium gets deposited on the valve and the valve fails to open. That is the term used for severe aortic stenosis. It's a disease process which practically affects 4 to 5 percent of the elderly population above the age of 75. So a patient can get breathlessness, low blood circulation to the brain can cause dizziness and even loss of consciousness and a sudden collapse. This left ventricular hypertrophy gradually degenerates to enlargement of the heart, dilatation of the heart, decrease in pumping efficiency of the heart or ejection fraction and as the muscle which has been pumping blood strongly against a severely stenosed aortic valve, as the muscle tires out over a period of time and years, heart failure results. When a person gets symptomatic from a severe aortic stenosis, from there on, 50% of the people would not survive for more than two years. When a patient comes with any of these symptoms or an elderly patient, the diagnosis is based on firstly clinical examination. Auscultation of the heart, as we call it, would actually demonstrate a murmur a mid-ejection systolic murmur, which is quite a sharp sound going from the right, left parasternal area up to the upper part of the chest and to the neck. That ejection systolic murmur often signifies a severely stenosed aortic valve. Uh, when you pick up such a murmur, the next step is to go to an echocardiogram, which is the cornerstone of diagnosis of severe aortic stenosis. And the severe aortic stenosis on echocardiography is diagnosed when the aortic valve area drops to less than one centimeter square. The mean gradient, if it's more than 40 millimeters of mercury, is severe aortic stenosis. The treatment options consist of either having a surgical aortic valve replacement or a transcatheter non-surgical aortic valve replacement. Nearly 40 percent of these patients cannot be operated upon or have a higher risk at surgery because of many comorbidities. Age itself becomes a risk factor for surgery. The transcatheter aortic valve implantation is an angioplasty-like procedure. This stent is inserted in a very compressed manner through the groin, through a sheath in the groin, can go across the aortic arch, go through the disease aortic valve and when it expands inside the disease aortic valve, it pushes the previous aortic valve around it onto the side and inside it is the new prosthetic, uh, new, new bioprosthesis which start functioning. The advantage of transcatheter aortic valve implantation in many instances is the fact that it is a much lower risk procedure than cardiac surgery or a surgical aortic valve replacement. It can actually be performed also in those patients who are either inoperable for, for surgical aortic valve replacement or who are too high risk for surgical aortic valve replacement because it is a lower risk procedure. It leads to rapid recovery because uh, often it is done in conscious patients uh, under sedation only. A patient can actually walk around on the ward the next day and can be discharged in three to four days time. It is a miraculous procedure, one would think, in the present circumstances of the group of patients that we are talking about who would otherwise be at high risk of a surgical aortic valve replacement. Or what is good for a patient with two established therapies often needs the sitting of the surgeon and the interventional cardiologist along with imaging specialists along with the anesthetists, along with echocardiographers and radiographers, radiologists, who what we call the heart team. And this heart team approach is the one which actually does the best for the decision making for these severe aortic stenosis patients.